Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I've got a couple of hours of clear skies, so the forecast and the, the weather's been terrible over the last few weeks, but, but tonight is supposed to be clear for a couple of hours, um, and then the clouds set to, set to come in around midnight, half 12, one o'clock-ish. So I'm gonna try something a bit different. I've never used the um, LRGB filters that I purchased when I, when I bought my camera, so I bought the, um, the ASI 1600, um, cool camera or the pro sorry the pro version of that camera and it came with the uh, the LRGB filters as well as the narrowband filters and since since getting them I've just been just been hooked with narrowband imaging so every clear night I've been taking uh, taking images with the narrowband filters but I've yet to try the LRGB filters so I thought a couple of hours um, clear skies I'll give a broadband target a go um, I have shot in broadband before, so I've shot a number of galaxies, but usually that well, that was using a one-shot colour camera, so I was using the A7 um, III, the Sony camera, the Sony mirrorless camera, so I've never actually used the uh, the different filter sets before, so this will be something new for me. Um, yeah, I, I do love uh, broadband imaging, like I said, I've shot a few targets before, so I've shot a number of galaxies, I've, shot, I've put a couple of images up now on screen, so I've shot the, the Whirlpool galaxy. The, the pinwheel galaxy, um, needle galaxy I've shot, the, the Leo triplet, um, also shot uh, Bowden cigar galaxies, um, shot Orion in, in broadband as well. So I, I love the, the look of broadband images, um, but yeah, I've got, got pretty hooked with narrowband imaging over, over the summer. So I thought I'd give these filters a go and um, I'll let you know how, they, how I get on. So I actually failed to mention in the last little clip what I was um, shooting and that is the Iris Nebula. So I've never photographed this before. It's a reflection nebula in the constellation Cepheus. So this was one of the reasons I chose to use the broadband, um, the LRGB filters on this target because it, because it's a reflection nebula. What I've read and what I've seen on YouTube and what I've heard other people talking about is that narrowband um, filters tend not to have much of an impact on, on reflection nebula. So I thought this was nice and high in the north, nice and easy target for me to photograph at the moment. So I thought I'd give it a go with the LRGB filters. So I'm just uh, inside, I've just quickly processed or just quickly taken a look at some of the data and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it for, for the amount of time that I collected on the target. Um, I've never put together an LRGB image before in Pick Insight, so I thought I'd do a quick video or I'd do a quick screen share and show you the process that I used. So I started by running the batch pre-processing in Pick Insights, and I'm aware that this probably isn't the best way of combining images, but I'm new to the program, so I'm sticking with it for now. Uh, I've got the LRGB images in the lights, I've got the darks and um, some bias frames in there as well. Need to take some flats because I haven't done that just yet. So this is what you end up with. You end up with the LRGB images, obviously. So I'm just stretching those now, um, just applying a histogram stretch with the screen transfer function um, and end up with four images, which we need to combine to make one final color image. So I'm just cropping them just to make sure that they all line up when you do combine them later on. And then I'm working on the luminance and I heard you need to try and make that as punchy as possible. So as much contrast and as much detail as you can. So just trying to increase the, the sharpness here by run, putting a mask over the, the majority of the nebula um, and then just run the unsharp mask tool. Um, I actually removed this later on because I didn't think it looked very good. So I'm just trying to reduce that now because that was a bit too much. But I did take this on towards the end, take this off of the luminance layer towards the end of the, the processing. But trying to make it as uh, punchy as I can. Um, and now I'm combining the LRGB or the RGB, sorry, and this is the, the color image you get. So I got rid of the, the background um, there because you saw there was quite a bit of a color cast on the background and I'm just doing a background, automatic background extraction. 
um, and then just boosting some of the, the colours to bring out the blues. This was the two images I was left with and there you go, this is me just taking off that sharpening there. So now it's just a case of adding the luminance to the RGB image and this was the final image, just a bit of a tweak with the histogram again and some of the curves and saturation and this was pretty much my final image. I did do a little bit more processing in Lightroom. So as you can tell, I'm really new to the program of Pick Insight. I've only been using it for a couple of months now, so I'm still trying to get my head around uh, around the program. And for any of you who've used it, you know it's not the most intuitive uh, software to, to use. So there's probably quite a few things that I'm doing wrong, or there's probably better ways of doing it. So I would really appreciate a comment down below if, you, um, if you've noticed anything that I could do better. Um, like I mentioned in the video, I took out all of the sharpening because um, the unsharp mask, mask tool in um, Pick Inside didn't seem to do a good job. So I took that out before um, before I combined the image. So if you've got any tips on that, that would be really, really great. Um, also, I know that the batch pre-processing isn't, isn't the best way of uh, stacking your images. It even gives you a warning before you run it saying this isn't the, the best method, but I haven't learned how to, to stack it all manually yet. So I'm just going to stick with that for the time being. Um, but anyway, yeah, this is the, the final image. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it considering it doesn't have a huge amount of data. Um, let me know your thoughts and see you in the next video.